Hello, Mario. In this video, I'm going to look at the anatomy of an invoice from New Zealand. So, um, yeah, I need some of my students in one of my courses to produce an invoice which uh, covers some of the work that they do um, for for a particular project that we're working on. So what I've done is I've uh, come up with an invoice. I've found an invoice on the internet, and I'm just going to look at it. It's This invoice is um, particularly um, specific to the New Zealand, the New Zealand situation, and uh, so there are some quite sort of specific things that we need, um, we need to look at on it um, just to... Um, just to um, get rid of, you know, just to make it fit the New Zealand situation. So uh, here's the invoice here, and um, I think I'll get it, just get a nice big picture of it so that we can see, see what it's like. So first of all, um, you need your company, uh, usual to have a company logo, um, or you know your company name at the top so the people know exactly who the invoice is from and with clear contact details so the physical address here um, with the correct um, postal code um, a post office box number if they're uh, sending it by um, by the post oh, post and a obviously a telephone number I would also suggest that it probably in this day and age, uh, needs to have an email address so that where where they could email and possibly even your website um, should be added to that. But some clear details of your company and where you want to go to. You also need to then uh, indicate who the invoice is being sent to. So it might have a, a person, their what their their title. Um, in there, where they where they are, and uh, their their address. I would also suggest that you would also uh, maybe put their email in there. Now, by law, there's a certain amount of information that must be on an invoice, and that is the GST or the Goods and Services Tax number. Uh, every company sending out an invoice. Well, anyone who is registered for GST must have a GST number. It is possible that some invoices do not have a GST number. If you're not registered for GST, you cannot charge GST. Um, so that's that's on there like that. Um, and so on. And now the contract. Um, so that's might be indicated there what the what the invoice relates to um, in particular if it was contract to draw a pic a draw a picnic table well you would put that in there so anything in brackets there you've got to um, fill that in yourself um, the contract reference so you might have a a reference number uh, for your contract these are very helpful I mean obviously in your firm you would hope that you were sending out quite a lot of um, invoices so um, a reference number would mean you'd be able to if there was any query quickly look up the invoice in your system and find it now the purchase order that might come from that would be relating to the to the company here so they might have sent you a form that has a number on it so that it correlates with with their records okay and so you would put that in there so if you were, they could then see, oh yes, um, we got such and such to draw a picnic table, here's the number, and then they can check that, you know, they're getting what they wanted and the goods are, are there. Um, also, over here, the GST number, the date of the invoice, um, and the invoice number, so it might be some random number or it might, you start at one, and then the, the, the date or the period of the, in the invoice so the date that it what it relates to so it might just be for April 2012 um, this might be stuff that was delivered in April 2012 but dates and things are very important so that people can record um, you know and just have a recollection so 
that's and then in here is the description of the the work or the information or the the physical objects that you are, that you um, supplied. So in this case here, it's office chairs. That's given a, a number, a reference number, and ten of them were supplied, hundred and five dollars each. So there's the total amount there, and they were delivered on the second of April. Um, you might want to, if you were say, for instance. Um, doing work, it might be um, hour, the, the quantity might be hours, so it would pay to indicate that, and then that might be your hourly rate there. Then you could have some um, things like for postage and materials and things like that. And these all get listed in here. The more information that you can give to the client, the better. So then you total up everything, so that it's usual that these are recorded without GST, and then the GST is added. The GST is 15%, although that's not shown here. Um, the GST is 1515 percent so that's added on there. Um, hopefully that's 15% in there. It looks like 15%. And the total, including GST, is those added up. And then if you choose to give a discount, um, so balance left to pay. So they're quite clear what's on the invoice. Remember, for the case of the picnic table, you are invoicing the client for your time in preparing the information that you've given them. So the majority of the stuff will be labour or your time. You could record what it is you're doing um, at each time. You might be drawing elevations, measuring up, checking plans, all of those things. The more information that you give the client, the more satisfied they will be of what was done and what they were paying for. Then at the bottom here, um, obviously, you've got some information here um, for direct bank payment. So um, these days people like to pay, so they've got the a bank number and for payment by check. Um, not some common the, in these days, but nonetheless, made payable to and addressed to accounts receivable. So that's some details there. Queries, if you have any queries concerning this invoice, please contact your name, your phone number, and there's an email there. So um, there we have it. Um, that's um, just some, uh, some basics there on uh, the, the anatomy of a... Um, anatomy of a of a uh, of an invoice um, so from that you should be able to draw up your own invoice you might need to know that there are various invoice templates available online for download uh, and there are also a number of different templates available in the word Microsoft Word templates for invoices and also in Microsoft Excel templates for invoices. So it shouldn't be too much, uh, too hard to find an invoice template that you could adapt and use for the situation. Um, I, I myself have used Excel, and then I'm able to total the invoices and do quite a lot of different stuff with that. So there you go. Just a little bit um, about an invoice and what, you should expect, or what I would expect, to see on the invoice. Cheers! See you!